it is possible to grow taller, even after puberty, within five to six months. Take a look at this Olympic athlete from Soviet Union. Rustam Akhmetovs, he had a remarkable journey of increasing his height from 5 feet 4 inches to 6 feet 2 inches after the age of 20, just after his coach told him to grow up, because he was short person and his performance has stopped improving, as the event started guiding others on how they could grow taller as. Well, Rustam stated, the reason for his height increase was more of psychological factor than a physiological factors. Both of his parents were short and none of his family members were tall. He was destined to be short and was, until he decided to grow taller. He believed he could grow taller, and his obsession forced his brain to rewire his genetic information to make him taller. But first, why do we get taller, and why we stop growing after the age of 18? The answer is hormones, and particularly HGH hormone, IGF-1, and testosterone. During our growing phase of puberty, there is a spike of these hormones which results in more muscle mass, longer bones, facial changes and deeper voice, but as we grow older, the secretion of these hormones decreases significantly and eventually, we stop growing taller. But in today's video you will learn how you can force your body to release more hormones and I in turn help you grow taller. Human Growth Hormone and IGF-1 HGH is released from the pituitary gland, and its main function are to repair tissues and growth, but however, growth hormone is not what increase our height. The hormone responsible for our height growth is IGF-1 which is an insulin-like growth factor. The pituitary gland releases HGH, which travels through the bloodstream to the liver, and synthesizes IGF-1 which triggers our growth, and during the age of 14 to 16 this hormone peaks, but gradually decreases as we grow older. That's why IGF-1 is very powerful for high growth. Fasting, there is a myth around that if you fast for 6 hours to 12 hours you can grow taller, as it may increase testosterone, but fasting and caloric restriction can reduce IGF-1 levels. Fasting and IGF-1 have a direct relation to each other, the more you fast the lesser IGF-1 levels you will have, and thus you will grow slower, so eat as much as you can. Milk and dairy products contain whey proteins, which cause a rise in insulin, IGF-1, and growth hormone levels. Getting enough sleep, sleep deprivation tends to suppress IGF-1 levels, you should at least get 8 to 9 hours of sleep. And get into a slow wave sleep. We will talk about slow wave sleep later in the video. Epigenetics. There is a term called epigenetics. Epigenetics is an emerging area of scientific research that shows how a person's experiences and environmental influence can affect the expression of their genes. The genes a person inherits from their biological parents provides information that guides their development. For example, how tall they could eventually become or the kind of temperament they could have. When experiences during development rearranges the epigenetic marks that governs the gene expression, they can change whether and how genes release the information they carry. Your body, your DNA, your hormones, everything, will start changing according to you as you start working on growing taller, because our body can change and it can modify according to our need. This is similar to why giraffe are so tall, because they have to eat the leaves from tall trees, over time remodeling their bones and next to reach the top of the trees, that's why their body changed over the time of evolution. Eating more versus eating good. Obviously eating highly nutritious and protein-rich food is a better option, but our main objective is to eat more, whatever you have. Eat 4 to 5 times every day, you should be eating more as your body will be demanding more energy, to grow more muscles and lengthening the bones. Your bones will need muscles to support it and for that you have to eat more. Fast foods and irregular timing of eating food are the main reason that affect directly our growth potential. In foods, you should be consuming a lot of calcium as it is essential for bone growth and bone health, and their sources are milk, cheese, yogurt, red meat as it is a complete protein food and contains all the essential amino acids and protein, compared to any other food. It also increases HGH and testosterone. Chicken, high in vitamin B12, a water-soluble vitamin that's essential for maintaining and gaining height, taurine, an amino acid that controls bone growth and formation, is also abundant in it. Zinc, this promotes growth and development of the bones, and their sources are meat, shellfish, seeds, nuts. There is one more very important vitamin, vitamin D, you get this from sunlight, fishes, and fortified dairy products. 
Being in the morning sunlight every day, this promotes bone health and this is very important for the body. If you can't get into any place where you can take a few hours of sunlight then there are several vitamin D supplements, but your body needs vitamin D to grow taller. But in the end even if you can't eat all the mentioned food above every day, just eat what you are served or cook in higher amount. Micro fractures. Your body needs to break in order to grow. Exercises are crucial to develop denser bones and muscles, which can support your growth. That is why you see basketball players, as soon as they start playing professionally, almost all of them experience a second growth spurt and they grow up to 5 inches or up to 8 inches in few years. Another example is the Maasai tribe, averaging at 6 feet 3 inches in, they practice a traditional exercise where they jump vertically as high as they can for a repeated no time and as they do it their bones experiences micro fractures, which later the body produces callus to fill the fractures in bones. This is a temporary, soft tissue that forms on the micro fractures and is gradually replaced by stronger bone tissues as healing progresses. Initially, it consists of a fibrous tissue and cartilage, which is eventually replaced by new bone through a process called bone remodeling. Also the diet of Maasai tribe, which consists of pure dairy food, red meat and a lot of sunlight exposure makes them one of the tallest people in the world. Exactly like that cycling and swimming both stretches our limbs and spine and causes microfracture, which is later filled with new bones, giving you longer bones and stronger muscles to support your bones. Sprinting There is no other activity that altered the human growth hormones to this level. Look at the difference between an track and field runner and those who sprint short distances. The sprinters present a muscular and ripped body type almost like a natural bodybuilder or athlete, but why? Because sprinting increases high amount of HGH and testosterone. Sprinting increases our growth hormone production up to 2000% and this also promotes longevity, injury healing and fat loss while maintaining muscle mass. Sprinting reduces fat percentage up to 40% more than any other training. Compared to traditional long-distance running, sprinting decreases body fat up to 93% more. So how can you actually start sprinting? The most common ways to sprinting workout is sprint interval training. This can be done with a series of 20 to 30 second sprints with your maximum speed with 4 to 5 minutes of break in between. To begin, start with a 5 to 10 minutes jog to warm up the body. Do some light stretching and mobility exercise followed by a 4, 20 second sprinting with 4 to 5 minutes of breaks in between. Sprinting utilizes exclusively fast twitch fibers. These muscle fibers, which are also targeted in most strength training, are much larger than slow twitch fiber. Sprinting puts pressure on the bones and creates micro fracture, which when healed, adapts to the stress it experiences. This will give you a greater increase in muscle mass and stronger bones and including your diet and stretching will significantly increase your height within few months. Slow Wave Sleep According to Dr. Andrew Huberman, slow wave sleep, SWS, plays a crucial role in regulating human growth hormone, HGH. During this stage, the body undergoes significant physical restoration and repair. Brain waves are slowest and most synchronized during SWS, as measured by electroencephalogram. Heart rate and respiratory rate decrease significantly. Growth hormone production peaks approximately 95%, which is essential for human growth and development. Deprivation of SWS affects HGH release. Studies have shown that depriving individuals of SWS leads to diminished and delayed secretion of HGH during sleep. This suggests that SWS is essential for normal HGH release. Dr. Hubermans, in his discussions on metabolism and HGH control emphasizes the importance of SWS for optimal HGH release. He recommends specific exercise protocols, amino acids, and temperature control to enhance growth hormone release during waking and sleep. By prioritizing slow-wave sleep and incorporating all of the recommendations, you will be able to naturally boost your human growth hormone production and support overall health and wellness. So here it is this is how you can increase your HGH, testosterone and IGF-1 and grow taller than your genetics, I will be uploading about 10 myths that stunts your height growth and what you can do maximize your growth potential. And we are trying to gain 50,000 subscribers by the end of this year so, do subscribe and I'll be uploading more detailed videos on how to grow taller.